Praise be to the living God. Join me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this wonderful day. Thank you very much for your kindness and for your love. Thank you for enabling us to hear your word as you speak to us every day. And thank you because I believe and trust that these words are bringing a change in our life. And you're becoming more like you because Christ indeed is our righteousness. And when we fix our eyes on him, he's able to work in our life and to transform us into his likeness and to prepare us for eternity. Honor and glory and praise remain yours, O Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 up to 18, it is talking about a battle, the battle between good and evil. It is talking about a battle with principalities and powers. It's a spiritual battle, it's not a physical battle. The fact that we want to look at today is the impossibility for us to win a spiritual battle with the flesh. Can I be victorious in a spiritual battle with the physical efforts? And can we be able to fight a physical battle from a spiritual point of view? A little background about the book of Ephesians is where Paul is exhorting these people about the importance of uniting in Christ Jesus and living as the children of light and not the children of darkness. And then when we get to chapter 6, he begins with an admonition of the various groups. How should people relate one to another? Beginning with the wives, the husbands, the children, the slaves, the master, and the parent. And then finally, it gives the message of strength in the Lord and in the mighty power by putting on the full armor of God to be able to prepare the saints to withstand the wiles of the devil and to stand in the day of evil. And as I read, it says that finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take up, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Here we are seeing that Paul is telling us to wear this full armor. The full armor is consisting of certain elements that it's important for us to look into. And the first one that we see here is that he is actually saying that we need to wear the full armor. It is not about a part of, it is like the fruit of the spirit, which has, you know, uh, nine elements in it. But those nine elements being intertwined. So likewise, the whole armor of God, including having your loins got with the truth, the truth of God, and the truth of God being what? Being the word of God, because the word of God is true. It is a standard for the Christian in this work of salvation. And so the truth is in the word of God. The truth is in Christ Jesus. And so we must have our loins got about with the truth of the word of God and having on the breastplate of righteousness and this righteousness, knowing very well that Christ Jesus again is our righteousness. So when we are having Jesus Christ in us, then we will have the truth and we will have the breastplate because we are talking about the full armor. It's like we are going into war and this war, this battle, we cannot be able to fight it unless we are properly dressed, unless 
we have the right armory and therefore it is telling us that we must have the breastplate of righteousness which is not our own our own righteousness friends we have seen is like filthy rags but we must have the righteousness of jesus christ who is our lord and our savior and then beautiful it is expressing that and our feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace wherever it is that we are going we are not people who are troublemakers we are not people who are going and causing people to you know fight and bring friction we are taking a gospel of peace up gospel of peace peace be with you peace be inside of you and the peace of god which surpasses all human understanding may be in the people that we are visiting may be in us because if you don't have the peace of god how will you teach somebody else about it and so this is telling us that our feet wherever it is that we go our life should be an expression of the peace of God. We must be able to impart that peace to others within our sphere of influence. The other thing that we must have is, above all, taking the shield of faith. Brethren, if we do not have faith, what is it that we can achieve in this world or in this Christian work? Faith is actually believing in God, believing in his word, and believing in this word to do what it says it will do where the rubber meets the road is depending upon this word to do what it says it will do because that's where now we actually separate completely from the from satan because even satan believes in god what the problem is is that he did not he does not depend upon the word of god to do what it says it will do he's not walking by that word of god but you and i as children of god are expected that we may believe in him and we may depend upon his word to do what it says it will do. And then it says that we must have the shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The wicked one is always throwing darts at us with the aim of destroying us because his work is what? He comes but for to, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Anytime he brings a challenge before us, our faith will be able to work and we'll go back to the word of God. We believe in it and we will look at the word of God because it has the word of God has got a solution for all the issues of life that we may meet with. And we will look at that promise in the word of God. We will claim it upon the situation that we are meeting or the fiery dart that the enemy is throwing at us. And we'll be able to depend upon that word to do what it says it will do. Because we have the shield of what? The shield of faith. Because when you have a shield, it is to keep away the enemy. And then going on in verse 17, it says, and then we take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation without being saved, without being redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. All these things we are talking about is a nullity. And Jesus came that he may seek and to save that which was lost like you and I. And when we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, and he is now leading our life and being in the driving seat of everyone, of us our head is covered because if any fiery dart gets to our head from satan it will destroy us and now what we read here is that when we have the helmet of salvation we are called the children of god we are we are his children not only by creation but by redemption because he has saved us we have believed in him and we have accepted him as our lord and savior and so we are wearing that helmet of salvation then we will not be destroyed by the fiery darts that are aimed at our head because that's where our thoughts are that's where our decisions are made that's where our conscience is 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 lodged in that is where the frontal lobe is where the lord god is also looking for and that is the seat of god it is in the head and the helmet of salvation therefore is covering us and we are safe safely hidden under the shadows of his wings okay continuing in verse 17 part 2 it says and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god we've also, we, we've already looked at um the word of god previously but here it is stating that the sword of the spirit the spirit is a spirit of god the spirit of god which is also the spirit of christ and the spirit of god is now what the sword and that is what the word of god because this is the thought of god which is expressed to us in word and now 
If the thought of God is expressed to us and we can bank on that word to do what it says it will do and depend upon it, then we really have a sword with which we can fight the enemy. Remember when Christ was being tempted by the devil, he said, it is written. He went back to the word. And so when the enemy will come and present to us a lot of things in our life, we must be careful enough to know the word of God and what it says. And beautifully, I know the spirit of the Lord will bring it to our memory. The angels of the Lord will direct us to where the word of God is, which we need for that situation. The children of God are supposed to be prayerful. And as we go down on our knees and pray every single day, the Lord will be directing us to the promises that we need for that day for every situation that is that we are going to meet with the lord will make us to remember even where we have read it before and when we recall it we'll be able to use it and to overcome the wiles of the enemy the other thing that i want us to look at again is verse 18 it says that praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. Here we are seeing the fact that we must continue to pray. We must pray without ceasing. Praying without ceasing does not mean that everywhere we are, we are on our knees praying. That is not practical. That is not realistic. But the prayer is like the breath of life. When you're breathing, everything that is coming out of yourself should be a prayer to the Lord. Everywhere that you are, you should be talking to the Lord because you belong to him. And remember in the book of Galatians 2.20, you no longer live when you are the child of God and you have given yourself to him and he has clothed you with his garments of righteousness you no longer live but it is christ that liveth in you and so everything that you are breathing out every time every word that is coming from you every thought of yours is actually subjected to the lord jesus christ and so you are able to pray without ceasing you are able to connect to the father through jesus christ and that is what it means and when we have now this full armor of the Lord God. If we have the truth, we have the breastplate of righteousness, we have our feet showed with the gospel of peace, and we have the shield of faith, and we also have the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we pray every time, praying in the spirit with all prayer and with supplication. And then we know God and we love God as our friend. It will be very easy for us and to see the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes. And so when we are looking at this topic, it is requiring a preparation of the heart. There is something that needs to be done in the heart of this person because we are fighting against principalities and against forces that we cannot see with our naked eyes. The human eyes are not able to see the war that is raging. And we are told that even in every meeting where the people of God are, like a spiritual, uh, like an effort being made or camp meetings or things like that, the evil angels are always there to fight with the angels of the Lord. And so a battle unseen by human eyes is being waged. And so friends, as we are moving on with this, I want us to realize something that the battle that is being fought here is a battle for the heart. And it is an individual battle. It is not about many people. It is you standing as an individual, me standing as an individual. It's about my heart. What preparation am I making in my heart in order to face the battle which is ahead of us? It is a battle about character. It is a spiritual battle because it's about taking on the character of Christ and not, you know, removing from us the character that is brought in because of sin. It is a real battle and it happens. Friends, it is something that we experience every single day. We may not be able to see it directly, but in the background, there is a whole, whole battalion of angels that are fighting for the children of God with the evil angels every single day. Even in gatherings where people go to meet even for religious meetings, the enemy is always sending people to that meeting, agents of his, he's sending the evil angels to come and interrupt those 
their meetings. And there are always two forces that are working. These forces work at cross purposes and that forces of evil and the forces of good. And the, and the battle is usually not seen by the human eyes but the battle is waging. The army of the Lord is on the ground and is seeking souls for the Lord. At the same time, the armies of Satan are on the ground trying in every possible way that they can deceive and destroy the people of God. And so the Lord is bidding us that we put on the whole or the full armor of God. And so we need to know that day by day, the battle is going on and it is there for your soul. It is there for my soul. And also fighting against the souls that we are praying for, fighting against the souls that we are reaching out to. Even with this message as it is going out, the enemy is fighting in every possible way so that it doesn't reach your heart. But the fact that you have been available to listen to this already is a blessing from the Lord and we need to thank God for that. If our eyes were to be open so that we see what is happening in the background, I'm telling you that we would not trifle with things God. We would not have vanity. It would not be about jesting and joking. We would be able to take the matters of God very, very seriously. If all of us would be able to put on the full armor of God and fight manfully, meaning we fight courageously the battles of the Lord, we would see the victories being gained and the kingdom of darkness trembling because we are no longer the ones fighting the battle with the enemy. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory, fighting the battle for us because we have allowed him in our life and the victories would be gained and the kingdom of darkness would tremble. The key principles that are here behind this story is that for sure that we are living in very, very perilous times and these are the last days and the time of trouble, the great time of trouble and the small time of trouble is coming upon us. And if you are not ready to, to meet with that time of trouble, I'm telling you we would not be able to stand because we've realized that this text is talking about enabling us by putting the full armor of God to be able to stand in the day of evil or in the day of trouble. And now in these last days with the battle being intensified, Till the close of time, there will remain a conflict between the church of God and those who are under the control of the evil angels. That will remain a constant. The only difference is whether you are wearing the full armor of God or whether you have decided that you will go and fight the battle with the flesh. If you go with the flesh, you get ready for failure because this is not a flesh battle. It is not a physical battle. And Satan is, is putting forth desperate efforts, desperate efforts to ensnare the entire world. He is coming up with a plan so that he can occupy your mind and my mind and divert our attention from the truth that are essential to our salvation and particularly for the present truth that is going to help you and I to be ready for the coming of the Lord. He is making desperate efforts so that he can divert my attention from that and your attention as well. And in every city, he is having agencies, he's having people who are busy organizing into different parties, those who are opposed to the law of God. The arch deceiver is at work to introduce the elements of confusion and the elements of rebellion in people. If you look at the world around you right today, you realize there is so much which is happening. There's a lot of confusion in this world. There is a lot of rebellion in this world. People are doing what they want to do. If you look this side, you realize that what people used to see as right, even a few years back today is seen as wrong. If you're standing for the truth and for the principles of God, you are likely to be considered to be wrong. And the people who are not standing for the truth are likely to be considered to be right. And so let me tell us, my friends, we are getting into a time of trouble that we have not yet understood or we cannot fully fathom. And when you're seeing that the enemy 
is actually amassing his forces today. He's getting his people together in readiness for this battle and for this time of trouble. And his evil angels are working left, right, and center to come and ensure that they divert your attention and they destabilize you in every possible way and lead you to confusion and lead you to rebellion. We rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus and we plead with our Lord Jesus to take control of our life so that we remain standing and we are able to fight this battle not because we have the power but because we believe in Jesus Christ who is able to fight this battle in our behalf. For we are told in the book of First Peter chapter 4 5 verse 8 be sober and be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion he is walking about and seeking whom he may devour if he is walking about up and down everywhere looking for someone to devour let me tell you he finds you when you are in a vulnerable position he will be able to devour you and so i'm praying that the lord may help to cover us and to protect us from the wiles of the enemy but above all that we may be receptive and respond to the love of god which is already showing to you and me by providing us with a solution that we may put on the full armor of god and our breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation the the truth in the word of God, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and that we may be able to move everywhere we are going with our feet shod with the gospel of peace. Everywhere we are going and we'll be able to pray earnestly without ceasing, praying in all manner of prayer and being able to know that our God is hearing our prayer. And having the shield of faith, we shall remain faithful and we shall live by the standards of the word of God. Because that is what the Lord has given to us as his standard to live by in these last days. Because indeed, friends, the days are evil. That soul is elected who will search the scriptures. That soul is working out his own salvation with fear and trembling. That soul is elected who will put on the full armor of God and fight the good fight of faith. That soul is elected who will watch unto prayer. Are you elected? That soul is elected who will flee from temptation, from the devil. And he is elected also who will have faith continually and who will be obedient to every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Are you elected? The results of redemptions will be enjoyed by those who have complied with the conditions. These are the conditions. Are you elected, my sister? I want to be elected. I don't know about you, but I know for sure that evil agencies have arrayed themselves against their people who are doing right. And our hope is not to be in any man. Our hope must be in the living God because we have the full assurance of faith and we may therefore expect that he will unite with us his omnipotence will unite with the human instrumentalities and when divine and human is connected and to the glory of his name will be able to overcome clad with the armor of the righteousness of god we may gain the victory over every evil one or every foe that comes to us it is impossible for us with our own strength to maintain the conflict and whatever will divert us from God, whatever it is that will lead us to exalting self in any way, whatever it is that will lead us to self-dependence, whatever it is that will lead us to any of these three things is surely preparing the way for an overthrow. The, the whole purpose of the Bible, my friends, is that it may inculcate distrust in our own human power because human power will always fail us. My dear sisters and brothers, we are contending with forces which are supernatural. But what is most exciting to me is that we are assured of supernatural help. And all the heavenly intelligences are in this army. And more than angels are in the ranks. If more than angels are in the ranks of this battle, why, why should I fear when I have Christ himself in me? Being in the driving seat of our life, 
In the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 16, the word of God says this, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. It means therefore we have to carry ourselves with a lot of humility. We have to be people who give thought to what we are going to say or what we are doing. Because the battle that we are fighting, friends, it is not about flesh and blood. Stand therefore having your loins got about with truth. Anyone who is uttering lies is selling his soul cheap in the market. When you are a liar, you'll always find that you think everyone else is lying to you because you're always lying to others. You have no confidence in the word of others. And that is where we are likely to go to if we are not making sure that we are always speaking the truth. Satan is coming right now with a lot of lies, with false doctrines that he's teaching people. And he is taking so many people captive without even their knowledge. But the Lord is asking us that we go back to the word of God which he has given to us because in it we will find thus says the Lord if it is not in the word of God I have got no business with it but if it is in the word of God then I believe it with all my heart and I prayerfully read it so that the Lord may help me to be able to interpret it in the right way because many of us may be reading the word of God and because we are not praying then we are not being led in it by the spirit of the living God but we are going with it in intellectually and we are having a head knowledge but we are not interacting with that at a spiritual level which only the Lord Jesus Christ can put in us or can give to us and so I pray that as we read the word of God we may be able to understand and interpret it in the right way the key learnings from this that the Bible which is the word of God is where we may equip ourselves for the struggle which is here on this earth for the struggle is great jesus won that battle with it is written we can win that battle with it is written god desires that his people may be able to prepare for the soon coming crisis to be prepared or unprepared they must meet it whether you're ready or you're not ready you will have to meet this battle but only those who are ready only those people who are wearing this full armor will be able to stand at that point in time of test testing and trials and again the principalities and powers and the wicked spirits in high places are arrayed against all those who yield obedience to the law of heaven. If you know that you are standing for the Lord Jesus Christ, if you know that you are standing by the word of God, thus says the Lord, we should not fear any persecution, any trial, any trial of our faith, any testing, because we know the Lord will give us the words to speak. And again, another thing, because we know that we are being led by Jesus Christ. And so this battle being his, it should bring joy to us when we are even going through persecution. For we know that it is an evidence that we are actually following in the steps of our master. He did no sin at all. There was no guile in the mouth of our savior. And yet he was tested he was tried and he was persecuted he was even crucified not doing one single sin what about you and i when we are persecuted for the sake of christ then we shall know that we are walking in the steps of our master who is the lord jesus christ and the Lord has not forsaken his people. He has not left us all. Don't think that you are alone in this battle. He is walking with us. And like when you remember the case of Elisha in the Bible, when the servant of Elisha was pointing the master to the big army that was surrounding them, and he was looking at it and seeing no way of escape, the prophet prayed and said this in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. The prophet said this, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. The 
mountain was filled with chariots and horses of fire. The army of heaven was stationed to protect the man of God. Even as today, if our eyes would be opened, would be able to see the many angels who are fighting for the children of God, that the enemy may not overtake them. Thus did the angels guard the workers, even in the course of reformation in the dark ages. And even though the dark times are coming ahead of us, that time of trouble such as never was the people of God will always be hidden under the shadows of the wings of God. God's faithful messengers are to go steadily forward with their work, clothed with the panoply of heaven. They are to advance fearlessly and victoriously, never ceasing their warfare until every soul within their reach shall have received the message of truth for this time. That is what the Lord is asking us. I'm getting that from the book Acts of the Apostles, page 220. What a wonderful word there that we giving us encouragement that we are not to fear anything, but we move forward because the Lord is walking with us. If you're called to go through the fiery furnace, like the three Hebrew boys, Jesus will abide by your side, the way he was able to abide with those faithful three in Babylon. And those who love their Redeemer will rejoice at every opportunity of sharing with him the humiliation and the reproach the love that we bear for our Lord Jesus Christ will make the suffering to be so sweet that we will not feel the pain of it. I want to imagine even when uh, Stephen was being stoned and he was there telling these people and, you know, they don't know what they are doing. Lord, forgive them. Similar words like what Jesus also said when he was being hanged on the cross. And he said, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. What is it that can bring us to that level where we are able to say, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And we'll be able to rejoice even in our suffering because we have got a higher calling. Because we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is with us. Because we know that him who is in us is greater than him who is in the world. When you are opposing the teachings of spiritualism, you are actually against not just men, but Satan and his angels. And you have entered upon a contest against principalities and against powers and wicked spirits in high places. The devil does not like it when you are, you know, opposing the teachings of spiritualism because that is a wrong teaching. And especially in these last days where people don't even believe that the dead people are dead, that people are worshiping spirits and thinking that they are worshiping the true God of heaven. When people are believing in things that they don't even know where they have come from and living the word of God which is that thus says the Lord God and we are worshiping other gods without knowing the time has come that when you are opposing the teachings that are being given by the enemy then that you know that you are actually fighting against the devil himself and you have entered into that contest with the principalities and powers and the wicked spirits in high places according to the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and Satan will not yield one inch of ground except as he is driven back by the power of the heavenly messengers. The heavenly messengers, the angels, are the ones who are able to fight with him. It is only Christ Jesus who has already defeated him. And so we know for sure when we are in Christ, then Christ is the one fighting this battle in our behalf. And so we shall not be afraid just the way Christ fought him and said it is written because the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive and is quickening. And so it is able to recreate even something which is dead. Something which is dead can rise up. Something which is lost can be found. The word of God is powerful. And so my friends, as the Lord Jesus Christ himself used it, we are able to use the word of God and to claim it by faith and walking with the Lord Jesus and having him as our righteousness. This word will come alive in our life and will be able to defeat the enemy because we have seen that he will not yield not even one inch of ground except that he is fought by another power outside of ourselves and that is the holy angels and the lord jesus himself using the mighty angels to fight in this battle 
if it was impossible for us to meet these requirements that we have been given, they would never have been given to us. In divine grace, there is a wonderful power, the grace of God sufficient for all of us, the grace of God that is undue favor for you and me. We do not deserve it. We are sinful men, but because we are hiding under the wings of our Lord and our God, then the Lord is able to impart to us that power because we have already accepted him. The biddings of the Lord are indeed his enablings. He cannot tell us to do something that he knows is impossible for us to do. I want to have faith. Lord, please increase my faith in you. And I believe this is a prayer of my brothers and my sisters that our faith may be increased by the Lord, that we may stand by his word and we may walk by it all through our life, believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of our life. Brethren, thank you so much for listening. May we pray as we bring this to a close and as we always remember to wear the full armor of God, not by our power, but by the spirit of the living God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you again. Lord, it was not an easy one, but you have made it possible. And I thank you because I know this is your word, O oh Lord. It's not my word. May you continue to be with us in this walk, in this journey, until the end of it all. This is our prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen.